the final oral presentation of the evening and then some really cool news. Um, this is the Teachers in Space, Inc. nationally distributed community. Very interesting community, by the way. Um, this is not a, an SSEP community that is localized, but it is a single nationally distributed community with teachers all over the country. Very different model for us. Um, this is Team 1 from Teachers in Space. This is a Mission 3B flight experiment. You gentlemen reported last conference on uh, pre-flight uh, uh, experiment design, and we are glad to see you back to report on post-flight results. Hi, everyone. My name is Hershit Sani. And my name is Robert Edmiston. Uh, and we are part of the Teachers in Space Incorporated Space Frontier Foundation community. And the title of our experiment is a study of how microgravity affects the enzymes in amyotrophic lateral sclerosis using the model of papain and gelatin. Next slide, please. So our inspiration for this experiment was our teacher and coach, Jason Whitworth, who was diagnosed with ALS in the fall of 2011. His, diagno his diagnosis drove us throughout this project. And in honor of him, we call this project Project Whitworth. Next slide. So glutamate is an amino acid, and it's used as a neurotransmitter. Uh, it's normally found in like the synapse between two different neurons. Um, it's a naturally occurring amino acid, and everyone has it inside of them. So next slide, please. In ALS patients, glutamate does not break down properly by enzymes. It builds up to a toxic level, which causes the motor neurons to die. And in return, this results in the loss of voluntary muscle controls that you see in ALS patients. Next slide. So the way enzymes work is it's kind of like a lock and key. So you have like a substrate and you have the enzyme. And it only fits in one way and only one, enzyme, or one substrate fits in one enzyme. So like if it fits this way, it will not work. If the same right substrate comes in this way, it does not work. You have to have it like this. Um, so when that happens, then the substrate breaks apart into small uh, sorry, smaller, more usable pieces for the body. Um, and then the enzyme is able to be continually reused and recycled so that it can continue breaking down for the body. Next slide, please. So our hypothesis was that enzymes would be more effective in space. We based that on uh, the fewer restrictions that would be present for the enzymatic pairings uh, because of the lack of force of gravity present in a microgravity situation. Next slide. So we were fortunate enough that NanoRacks allowed us to use a type 3 FME. Um, so in the first volume, we placed our papain, which was our enzyme. Uh, in volume two, we placed our gelatin, which, is, which was our substrate. To activate the reaction, all you had to do was undo clamp A and shake for 20 seconds. Um, and then in volume three, we put our sorbic acid, or vitamin C, which this basically stopped the reaction and shut down the enzyme so that we could get an accurate reading of the uh, protein that was left. So to activate that, you would just undo clamp B and shake for 20 seconds. Next slide, please. Now the moment of truth, the launch. So our project launched January 9, 2014 from the Mid-Atlantic Regional Spaceport in Wallops Island, Virginia. It launched on an Orbital Sciences Antarctic uh, rocket and delivered by the Cygnus Ferry Vehicle. During the launch, we had students from our high school as well as some ALS patients present, and we waited in um, much anxious, uh, <laughs> as much anxiety as this launch into space. All right, next slide. Uh, we were even fortunate enough to have. Uh Launch Control, give a thumbs up to Coach Whitworth, because uh, I guess they heard about him. Uh, we got a thumbs up from the director of Goddard, uh, the chairman and president of Orbital, and the uh, ISS program manager. So he's like in charge of all of I the ISS program. Next slide, please. So our experiment on the ISS. Our experiment was initiated by astronaut Mike Hopkins on March 5th, 2014, and it was terminated by astronaut Koichi Wakata on March 8, 2014. The total runtime was exactly three days, three hours, and 59 minutes. Next slide. So uh, I guess a couple of the astronauts heard about, our, uh, heard about Coach Whitworth, and uh, even ast astronaut Rick Mastracchio sent out a little uh, words of thanks to Coach Whitworth, uh, which we thought that was really awesome. Next slide, please. So this was our ground experiment. On the ground, we initiated our experiment on March 7, 2014. 
and our experiment was terminated on March 10th, 2014. The total runtime, just like in space, was exactly three days, three hours, and 59 minutes. Um, next slide, please. Uh, so the experiment returned to Kazakhstan via the Soyuz um, on March 11th, 2014. And what we thought was really cool about this was it actually brought back Mike Hopkins, who was the one who initiated our experiment. So it was really cool that the astronaut that started it came home with it. Uh, next slide, please. So our experiment shipped from Kazakhstan to Houston and then finally back to Melbourne, Florida, where we anxiously opened it along with some of the members from the ALS uh, support group from our community. Next slide. Uh, we tested the FME with a puree protein assay, and that helped us determine the levels of protein that was still left in the FMEs. Next slide, please. So we used a device called a spectrophotometer to determine the amount of remaining protein by measuring the absorption levels of each individual sample. Next slide. Um, this is our data that we collected. Um, on the next slide, you uh, get a much better representation. So can we please uh, get the next slide? All right, on this slide, you can see a bar graph. Um, the four uh, samples on the right are the ones that we conducted on the ground, and the one on the left is what we had in space. We were very happy with the res results. It was astounding that we found 40% more efficient breakdown of proteins in space than we did on Earth. This was completely unprecedented for us. Next slide. Uh, so we ran our data through the ANOVO statistical analysis tests, and uh, we found that the two groups were statistically significant, which was really awesome. Um, and like my uh, partner here, Sunny, said, it was uh, about 40% more efficient in space than it was on Earth, which was exactly what our hypothesis was. And we were ecstatic that we actually found some pretty good support for what we thought was actually going to happen. Uh, next slide, please. All right, we would like to give a big thank you to all of these uh, organizations and um, groups that helped us throughout this project. And we would also like to give a big shout out to our teacher, Ms. Amy McCormick. Um, this project would not be possible without her. And a heartfelt thank you to Coach Jason Whitworth, who has been and will always be in our hearts, giving us hope and leading us on. Do we have any questions for the teachers and space team? Um, my question, okay, Ronnie from New Jersey in Long, Long Branch. My question is, do you think that if, if it, okay, do you think that if this was put into market, do you think that it will help many, many other patients and be used very, very, what's the word? Well, um, as things stand now, um, of course, it's not very possible to send anyone up into space, um, without like, you know, them being an astronaut already. But commercial space flight is becoming much more popular and it is taking off and in the next few decades, we could see some actual usage for um, these kind of experiments. So we're really, we're really looking forward to that. We also uh, think about like the liquid uh, thing that the uh, nanoracks guy was talking about yesterday where we took the liquids and took them out of their element and now we're learning more about liquids. That's kind of what, what we were doing with the enzymes and we're trying to learn more about how enzymes work. Because we kind of already know kind of how they work on Earth, but then if we put them in their, out of their element, we can learn more about the enzymes. Uh, Mitch from Long Branch, I really love your inspiration. It was very moving. And my question is, do you plan to continue your research on this topic? We plan to continue helping as much as we can. Uh, both of us are actually in college right now. We're going into our sophomore year, so uh, it's kind of hard for us because we both live about three hours away from our old high school. Um, so it's kind of hard for us to get back and assist, but we're gonna, we help any possible way that we can and anything moving forward that they need help with, we're most definitely gonna jump right on board and help them. And not only that, but we also wanna be um, a big part of the ALS community. Mm -hmm. um, we're not gonna stop there. We have tons of momentum right now and we're gonna continue with it. Um, you know, professional research teams, um, they move from institution, you know, the researchers move across institutions but they find a way to collaborate because this is their passion, this is their, their, this is their profession. And you guys are how far apart now? 
Uh, he's at University of Florida, which is about two hours north of where I'm at. I'm in St. Petersburg. And you found a way to come to this conference and present your results. Yes, sir, yes, we sir. did. So with that, we are concluding the oral presentations for the 2014 conference. Thank you, uh, teachers in space.